UFC Fight Night 133 is going down on July the 14th in Boise, Idaho. We're now joined by one of the men that's coming on this fight card, Zach Otto. Zach, as always, man, I appreciate you taking some time out. When this fight was announced, uh, it, it was a head scratcher for me. And, and the reason it was a head scratcher is I, I don't know why this fight was ultimately brought to you. Um, is were, were you surprised like everyone else was that when it comes to Sage Northcutt, you got the phone call? Yeah, I was really surprised. I mean, of course, we know that he's been having some success and fighting a lot recently at 155. So um, I didn't even think it was on the table for me. And then when my manager called, I was like, is this like a fill-in or this is at 170, right? Is this... He's like, yeah, it's your fight. It's at 170 and, you know, full fight camp and everything. I was like, wow. Um, uh, yeah, I guess out of anybody that could have been picked. And with him being kind of a poster boy, uh, stylistically, I just I don't see it going well for him. I, I literally on my podcast earlier this week, I said that I, I was like, I, I from a stylistic matchup. I don't know why Sage people agree to this fight because it's not like you're a small 170 or I mean I look at Sage and I almost feel like he'd be a perfect guy for a 165 pound weight class you know yeah, he, he's he, he's so big at 55 and, and he's just not he's just not big enough at, at 70 um and, and I know you've talked about this in other interviews you're like look wherever this fight goes I, I've got the advantage I mean is there a part of you that goes does his team think something bad about me or I mean do you even think about that yeah, I mean, I guess he's pretty young in his career, and he's getting better and better, and and uh, they've been bringing him up slow. You know, I don't know if it's kind of a time of shit or get off the pot. You know, like uh, how much, how many more bottom of the roster guys can they mm -hmm. give him? So it's kind of like, well, let's test him a little bit, or I don't know if they want him to stay down at one fifty five, and they're they're trying to keep him away from coming up to one seventy. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but uh, I'm just excited about the matchup. Uh, I, like you said, 165 would probably be really good for him. That that last couple pounds, I'm sure, is, is tough, and then it affects your performance the next day. But then his walk around weight is just really small for 170. So, um, yeah, I I, uh, I like going in there and, and being the bigger, stronger guy, and uh, I think it's going to work out well for me. In terms of preparing to fight a guy with, with Sage's ability, the way he stands, the way he moves, is it is is that what is the the, the unique challenge? And just trying to figure out, um, you know, who he was, you know, the first time he came to the UFC and to where he is now. Uh, yeah, you know, he's been evolving, and I'm sure he he kind of found a home there uh, with this gym, uh, Team Alpha Male, and you know, I I have a, a buddy that trains out there and. I know they're a good team, so I'm sure he's evolving and, and getting better. He's not like some 37 year old that I've, you know, has had 20 fights in the UFC where you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, I'm sure he's taking a lot in every month and, and getting better and better. But I think it's just a little too soon uh, for him for the for this step up. You know, and for you, I mean, obviously, you're always looking for a a fight that's going to help you, uh, you know, draw more attention. And and this is that fight. I mean, you know, people. I mean, look, we both know people have various opinions about Sage Northcutt uh, of of how quickly he's been put into position he's been put in. But would you call this, in, in terms of notoriety, the biggest fight of your career? Yeah, as far as uh, is the amount of eyes that are going to be on this fight will probably be a lot more so than any other fight I've had. So it's a great opportunity to capitalize. Um, but at the same time, I, out of the, this is now my sixth UFC fight. I mean, I've been fighting guys with a lot of experience or winning records in the UFC. Um, I've fought some tough dudes. So skill wise, I don't know if he's at the caliber that I've been fighting, but as far as notoriety, notoriety, uh, this will definitely be the most eyes. Has it even come across your, your mind about, you know, getting that, you know, back to back win in the UFC because it hasn't happened yet. I mean, is that has, I mean, do you even think about like, man, why has it not been able to happen to this point? Um, in the past playing other sports and stuff, I've always gained confidence through gaining experience. 
And now I feel really comfortable in there. Um, fighting these, these tough guys has given me a lot of confidence. Um, so now moving forward, um, I think you can really start to see, uh, the type of fighter I really am. And I'm excited to get on this win streak finally and get on a, a finishing streak too. And of course, you're coming off a great victory against Mike Pyle, and, and we talked prior to that fight. It was, you know, a guy that you you had looked up to, you know, c- you know, coming up in, in the scene. Was that was that a tough fight for you mentally, just because of you've been you'd seen Mike's career kind of progress, and, and knowing that was his last one. Uh, it wasn't difficult. It made it just fun. It it made it much more relaxing. It was probably the most relaxed I've ever been in a fight, as far as. I mean, we were smoking and joking the day before at weigh-ins, and it was just like um, a super easy-going experience. But then uh, once I was in there, and you know the announcement happened and the walkout, I I went back to serious mode where I thought possibly my job was on the line and I wasn't going to be taken from me. So um, it was it just kept me nice and easy leading up to the fight, and then once the fight was there, it was go time. Um, so that works well for me, but also at the same time, uh, I, I kind of take, I feed off my opponent, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be that code, that Kobe Covington type. Uh, if most of the time in this game, you'd be surprised how often your opponents are super nice guys and respectful and I pay it back to them if it's that way. And if it's, I just kind of shoot you straight, you know, if I, if it's I don't like you and it's it's not a respectful type matchup, then I don't mind talking some shit. Otherwise, I don't see a need to. You know, we always talk about perceptions versus reality in this game, and, and I think one of the biggest perceptions out there about MMA fighters that real that is not true is that people have this perception like, oh, you're this mean guy because you step into a cage and you fight. And um, I remember talking to Benson Henderson uh, recently about this where he, he, you know, he talked about it. It's like, you know, I was asking about what, what would surprise people or, or what have you come across? And he says, a lot of people I meet that don't know who I really am, they're surprised to find out that I'm college educated. And he goes, it's just kind of this, I guess, stigma would be the best way to kind of describe that people have when it comes to the fight game. Uh, yeah, it's still, the sport's still in its infancy and people are still learning about it. Uh, especially middle-aged to older people don't quite understand it because they weren't raised with it. Uh, now we're getting this whole wave of kids that are getting brought up and it's getting much more mainstream, but a lot of people still have those thoughts about what type of person it must take to get in there and fight somebody else. And, you know, I played high level football and I have to say that's a lot more violent than, uh, than what we do. And my mentality, you know, I was, I was all state linebacker in high school. My mentality to be the best linebacker in the state of Wisconsin was way more ruthless than I need to be going into a fight. Um, but you just don't see it because we got the pads on, we got the helmet covering our faces and you're looking from afar from the stands, but down there in the trenches, it's, it's nasty, you know? Um, so when I go into a fight, I try to keep emotions out of it because that's just going to drain your energy. Your And uh, I'm trying to think as clearly as possible because there's so many different facets to fighting. And, uh, you know, you got to be able to adapt on the fly and think clearly and, and chain moves together. Um, so if you're just going in there with like a lot of emotion and just uh, at this level, it's not going to work out for you very well. Uh, you know, I mentioned about last time we talked, you, you had mentioned about there was going to be some announcements about uh, your gym, and it's been a, a good couple months here with the Contender Series. Uh, do, you, are, do you find yourself more nervous watching your teammates and your training partners fight than you're actually nervous for your own fight? Yeah, that's funny you say that. You must have heard that from other people because that's totally true. Um, I, I feel much more in control when I'm walking out and I'm getting dialed in. Uh, when I fight versus when one of my fighters fights, uh, because you're there coaching and, and stuff, but you're not as you're not in the driver's seat anymore. And so being a fighter and a coach, yeah, I can compare the two and I do get more nervous for my fighters, especially when they have a high level fight, you know, uh, a fighter that I've been around for years that we brought up through the amateur ranks now into uh, they're a pro and they're, they're in these big fights where they're, 
getting so close to realizing their dream. Yeah, there's a lot of nerves that go on. I mean, especially that contender series. It's such a unique situation because maybe there's a hundred people in the building, and Not and, even, yeah. and and it's but, so quiet. It's it's such a different experience than anything I've seen on any regional level or anything like that. Um, yeah, contender series is different. There's no walkout music. You just walk out. There's some claps from the little bit of people that are in the bleachers watching. You know, you got the the big wigs sitting over at a table and the TV crew, and that's about it. As soon as they get into the cage, there's no announcement. It's just you ready, you ready. As soon as the door closes and they fight, and you can hear the spring of the canvas as they're moving around. It's that quiet in there, uh, which was nice because we were able to easily. Uh, get some information through to our fighter, but at the same time, it's it's just a very, very unique type fighting experience. Yeah, I, I forget I was talking to somebody recently about this. And they said it's almost like you feel like you're just having a fight in a gym. Yeah, yeah, it almost feels like a Saturday sparring session at uh, at our gym where we're putting in our rounds and you got some people around the cage that are watching and throwing in some instructions. It felt like every Saturday. So, uh, final thing with this fight being, uh, you know, so close to Wisconsin there, how, how many, uh, friends and family are, are coming to Idaho? Uh, I do have some friends and family that usually make it out anytime I fight in the States, you know, for like three times in a row there, I was going international and my friends and family that normally can make it out. They're like, well, and there, and some of them were even short notice. So it's like, yeah, I'm not going to get a short notice plane ticket to New Zealand. Um, so now it's good being back in the States. Uh, obviously much more manageable with the weight cut and the preparation, but more manageable for friends and family that want to make it out and come watch. So uh, I like it. I do eventually want to fight sometime in Europe, knock that continent off the list, but uh, it is nice fighting in the States. Is there a, uh, a dream location in Europe? Uh, anywhere in Europe. You know, I fought on four continents so far. Uh, they don't do fights in Africa or at least not yet. And they don't do them in Antarctica. So uh, if I if I get a fight in Europe, then I'll have fought on every continent that I could. And, of course, this all goes down Saturday night, July the 14th, live on FS1. You see Zach, a part of the main card there. Zach, as always, I appreciate the time. And, of course, let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Yeah, on social media, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, just under my name, Zach Otto. And then on Twitter, I'm at the, under the handle at the Barbarian MMA.